Are you living in a box using a case management system that somebody else built for you and you're thinking to yourself, there has got to be a better way. There has got to be a more cost effective way. Hello, I'm Misty Murray. I am the creator of the Microsoft 365 case management system. And I'm here to tell you, yes, there absolutely is a way. And I want you to start looking at Microsoft 365 and whether or not that's a viable solution for you. Now people come to me and they say, Misty, how do I know whether or not this is a viable solution for me? How do I know whether or not my firm is ready to start using Microsoft 365? What sort of license do I need to buy from Microsoft 365? You know, I'm sure you have these questions. And so in this video, I wanna focus on those very questions, getting them answered and getting you started on Microsoft 365. In this video, we're gonna cover my five tips to getting started with Microsoft 365. Smash that subscribe button and click that thumbs up so that other people get alerted about this sort of content that's available to them. I don't want you to live inside of a box anymore. I want to empower you to design your own box. All right, let's get started today. Okay, now my number one tip is probably the most important one, which is your email must be hosted in Microsoft Exchange. You cannot have G Suite and have Google and expect to go into Microsoft 365 and be able to use that SharePoint email address like you want. It just won't work. You must be in Microsoft Exchange. Your email must be hosted within Microsoft Exchange. If your email is not being hosted in Microsoft Exchange and it's in Gmail or in G Suite, there's a solution already built into your Microsoft 365 Admin Center if you've already got your subscription. Now, speaking of that subscription, let's go into tip two, which is please buy your Microsoft 365 subscription directly from Microsoft. Do not buy it from a third party solution. Now, now I know that there's gonna be some criticisms against this because there are third party solutions out there who are resellers of Microsoft 365 and they're great. They're great solutions. If you're buying your Microsoft 365 from a third party, if you are going through some sort of vendor like GoDaddy or an IT solution, then you need to ask them whether or not you have access to your Microsoft 365 Admin Center. It is very important that you have access to that because if you are going to use Microsoft 365, SharePoint, Teams, and those sort of solutions as a case or practice management solution, you need access to that Admin Center. So you don't wanna be cut off from that. You do want to go ahead and try to purchase your Microsoft 365 subscription directly through Microsoft. Now, in terms of that Microsoft 365 subscription, I am going to recommend that you purchase the business standard license. All you need are the Microsoft 365 applications. Obviously, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, but you also need OneDrive, SharePoint, Planner, Microsoft Forms, those sort of applications as well. What you don't need more than likely is Microsoft Azure and Microsoft Intune. That can be overkill for a lot of smaller firms who don't really need to go through a computer management service, a virtual service like Intune. So you don't need to pay for Azure and you don't need to pay for Intune and thus you can probably go with a standard license. You do not want to have a family license. You cannot really leverage this system and use it as a practice management system if you only have the online applications and if you have a family plan. So I do recommend at least that business standard plan. Now the Microsoft 365 standard plan still does come with all the bells and whistles that we need for security purposes as well. We can still set up data loss prevention policies. We can still reduce um, privileges and roles should we need to. We can still encrypt emails. We can still um, you know, protect the integrity of the data during the transmission process when we need to simply with that standard license. We don't need to go all the way up if we want to. Now, I actually have an E5 license because I like all the bells and whistles I could possibly get because I'm vetting them for people like you. But I also know that Microsoft 365, whenever they come out with new solutions, they usually tear those solutions out, meaning they usually start with that E5 license and start to slowly release it 
two tenants, two Microsoft 365 subscribers and users. But the E5 license holders are usually the people who get those new nifty bells and whistles first. And for that reason, I do have an E5. But you don't need it. Just the business standard will work perfectly fine. All right, tip number three is that you need to start becoming intimately familiar with all of the Microsoft 365 applications. Now, there are some applications that you probably will not use. For instance, Microsoft Yammer. It's like Facebook for Microsoft 365 users. And quite frankly, the only people that I know that are using things like Yammer are big corporations who have multiple offices throughout the country or internationally. Those sort of people can use Microsoft Yammer. It does work for their organization. But if you've got a two, three, four, five person law firm, Yammer really doesn't have a place in your firm. You can probably do okay with a web part like news. But what you really want to do is look at your case management solution that you have right now and make sure that you have mapped everything to go over to Microsoft 365. So here's what I mean by that. If you are keeping notes in Clio somewhere for a particular case, where are you going to put those notes when you transition to Microsoft 365? You already need to have that sort of in mind. Now for me, my recommendation would be you take those out of Clio and put those in notebook, the notebook associated with that particular case. But you get my point, you know, documents from this place are going to go into the SharePoint document library. Notes from here are going to go in the notebook. Calendar and events over here are going to go into Outlook calendar. You get the gist, you know, tasks and assignments over here are going to go into Microsoft Planner over here. And once the users get those assignments, they're going to be taught how to use Microsoft to do how to manage their time to complete those tasks that were delegated to them in Planner. So you basically want to figure out a way to execute all of your day-to-day -day processes within the Microsoft 365 umbrella. It's a really awesome, big, robust umbrella that can basically do anything that you need it to do in any case management solution that you already have. But here's my point. I am not trying to put you in a box. I'm trying to empower you to create your own box. And at the end of the day, I want this to be your last migration. I think people are really excited about the possibilities of controlling the technology for the data that they own. What people are fearful of always when going into a case or practice management system is migrating out of it. And for that reason, some people just don't. They don't migrate out of it because it's, it's just too, you know, like homework. It, it, it's just hard for them. So that brings me into my next point, which is baby step into this thing. It doesn't have to be a retroactive system. And in fact, it shouldn't be a retroactive system. It certainly wasn't for me when I first started this. So what I did was I brought in about 10 cases or so, real world, that I was starting to test the viability of using SharePoint, using OneDrive, and using OneNote, and using all of those things. You have the ability to test that out. You don't have to dive all in. So I took it going forward. I didn't make it re retroactive. And that was much easier for my team to digest. It was much easier for my team to opt into and say, yeah, let's, let's start doing it this way because we baby stepped into it. And I didn't just throw every bell and whistle out there and say, hey, here you go. Use it or not. I don't care. No, it was about customizing my experience. It was about customizing the experience of my team. It was about bringing everything together in a collaborative space that we could easily work with one another, that we could be efficient, that we could be productive. And at the end of the day, we could just get there faster. That's what we're trying to do. We are just trying to get there faster. I know how I need to get there. I know which processes I need to get there. So it's easy for me to customize the user experience within SharePoint and within Teams and all of the different applications that I have working for my team and my practice management solution. Think about how 
testing the viability of Microsoft 365 looks for you. I mean, I think people get introduced to Microsoft 365 and then they reach SharePoint and then it's just this huge rabbit hole that they just go down. Now, I spent four and a half years in that rabbit hole before I ever put out a video. And once I did, I was like, oh my God, this is a thing. People really, really need this. And so it really just became my mission to empower my legal industry on how using Microsoft 365 was entirely and is entirely possible. I do this all the time for people. I have hundreds and hundreds of people who have taken my masterclass and who have created this system for themselves. And they can come to me in a coaching session, which comes with the masterclass, and I can show them how to scale their environment or how to add on to it or how to customize a solution for themselves. And then I've got Aero 365 that completely customizes the solution for you, spits out a SharePoint template in your environment within five to seven minutes, and you own everything. In fact, I just recently put out a graphic that shows how that process goes with Aero 365. You know, it starts with your firm, goes to my code, ends in your firm. Data you own, technology you trust. This is your last migration. OneDrive, you own it. All right, let's get into my last tip, which is you need to get 100% digital. I mean that, 100% digital, go paperless as much as you possibly can. Every single communication that I have is going through email. Even if I text someone, it still goes through Outlook. Did you know that? Did you know that you can text people in Outlook? You just need to know their cell phone provider you know their cellular provider, you can actually text an Outlook and track that information. It looks like it's coming as an actual text to the end user. A lot of people don't know that that feature exists. And that's part of the rabbit hole, I guess. But it's sort of up to me to tell you these solutions. This is a feature in Microsoft 365 and this is how you can use it in law. But I had to go 100% digital to use this whole solution really effectively. Even the medical records I get now, I am getting them natively. I'm getting them right from the electronic healthcare record system, that EHR. I'm getting it going right into my SharePoint environment. Everything is searchable within that medical record. Every single correspondence is, is, you know, done through email. Every time I get served a pleading or served discovery on something, hey, there's this email address. It's my SharePoint email address. You send it to that address. Every time a deposition is taken, you get that email address to the court reporter and say, whenever you send us the digital transcription of this deposition, this is the email address you're going to send it to. And as a byproduct, it goes to all of the members of my team and my team know what to do with it once they get it. So, if you are all in in Microsoft and your email is being hosted in Microsoft Exchange, then you're ready to go, all right? If you have not got your Microsoft 365 subscription yet, go to office.com and look at the Microsoft 365 plans, the business plans that are available to you. And if you still have a question about which plan is right for you, there's even a little wizard that Microsoft has that you can answer some questions and it will guide you on the right plan for you. And I will link that in the description box below. So go 100% digital and make sure you're intimately familiar with all of those Microsoft 365 applications so you know exactly how you can execute them to move the needle forward, to get things done in your cases, to get the communications out there, to get the pleadings indexed, to get the tasks delegated, to manage your time, to do intakes using Microsoft Forms. There's just so many solutions under that Microsoft 365 umbrella. But if you need a roadmap, then those five tips that I gave you, those will really help you get started. You can test the viability of using Microsoft 365. You just need to get out there and do it. If you need someone to help you, there is a link in the description box below and I have all sorts of options available to you because empowerment looks different to different people. We have one-on-one -on -one training sessions. We have a monthly plan. We have a SharePoint templating solution. 
Um, there's all sorts of ways. There's all sorts of ways that you can be empowered as a Microsoft 365 user. But that's really the point in all of this is to empower the user. There's this joke that I'm like the nanny McPhee of law. I'm here when you need me and I'm gone when you don't. But isn't that the point? Shouldn't we be empowered to use the technology that we have available to us that moves the needle forward and keeps us productive and ahead of the chaos in our cases? I recently gave a presentation before my law CLE in the federal bar about using Microsoft 365 and how to build your legal house within the Microsoft 365 umbrella. If you are interested in seeing that video, looking at that presentation, and even receiving CLE credit for it, there is a link in the description box below. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you, those five tips. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope it really has helped you answer any Microsoft 365 questions that you have. I do hope that you try it, that you test the viability of Microsoft 365 and whether or not it is a good solution for you and your firm. I promise it is more cost effective than anything that you're probably paying for, even Clio. All right. Thanks guys so much for watching and I will see you guys back here on the next one. Bye guys.